In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Hello, everyone. I'm Father Alan Wearsba, the Director of the Office for Vocations of the Diocese of La Crosse. And today I'm very pleased to be joined by Deacon Juan Pedro Robles Baltazar and also uh, the seminarians of the Diocese of La Crosse. We ask that you would please keep all of them in your prayers and pray for more holy vocations to the priesthood, religious life, to holy matrimony, and to the generous single life. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are mighty in peace and free of sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are Lord, made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed, and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. <laughs> Who can know God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid, and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth, and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or who ever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. Four thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing past which springs up at dawn anew, 
but my evening waits and fears in every age of Teach us to number our days of life, that we may gain wisdom of heart. We turn, O Lord, how long will you have pity on your servants? In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper the work of our hands. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, Beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, This one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms in the same way. 
Any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone comes to me without hating their father and mother, wife or husband, children, brothers and sisters, and even their own life, they cannot be my disciple. Today we hear a very difficult gospel passage, a message that may cause some confusion. How could Jesus, who ordinarily preaches love and forgiveness, make a statement like this about hate? How can we hate the people we love? The word hate, as it is used here, is not meant to tell us that to be Jesus' disciples, we must dislike our family or even reject them. Rather, Jesus is saying that unless you place him above everything else in your life, you cannot be his disciple. Placing Jesus first in our lives is not easy. It requires sacrifice to be a disciple of Jesus. But for all that we may forsake, there are greater rewards. Jesus says we must place him above all others, even over our own life. These difficult words to hear and follow were very necessary for what was happening in Jesus' ministry at the time. You see, the people were following Jesus, beginning to think of him as a great political leader who would lead a revolution and overthrow the Roman government that was subjecting the Jews. They thought Jesus was on his way to becoming the king of all of Judea. But Jesus knew that he was on his way to the cross. He did not want to mislead the people. To follow Jesus means being rejected. Jesus would pay with his life, and anyone who was his disciple would pay the same cost. So Jesus placed a condition on following him, hate one's family. That is, put commitment to Jesus above everything else. Carry the cross with him and detach yourself from your possessions. Jesus did not say don't have possessions, but he did say detach yourself from them. Possessions are not what is important. Jesus is what is important. Notice that these conditions to follow are all opposite of what worldly people are about. Worldly people tend to be selfish, putting their wants and needs above everyone else's. Worldly people have a lack of commitment to anything in the future. Worldly people want all that they can grab a hold of, especially power and control. And here is where Christianity seems so crazy to the people of this world. When we put Jesus Christ above everything else, even our own lives, we have life more fully, and we have more life to give to others, more love to reach out with, and more peace inside to be more patient and tolerant of others. We Christians live in the world, but we live looking toward our home in heaven. We know that our home in heaven is what is most important, not what we have here in our earthly lives. So please, let us rise now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, for all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his his kingdom kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Beloved, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, not only for ourselves and our own needs, 
but for all those who are in need. For those who do not yet believe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For good weather and the fruits of the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of our diocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions submitted by our viewers at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we come before you with faith and love to praise your goodness and to acknowledge our need. We ask you to hear the prayers we make in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. On your stage, with all these backward appointees, is a Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that he may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, as we move through this remarkable and beautiful year of mercy, we are grateful that God shows his mercy to us and each and every day as we celebrate the Eucharist. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your support. May God bless you and reward you and keep you in his own love and mercy every day of this holy year.